Today we're going to talk about the possible successor to the Nikon D810. Stay tuned. Hello everybody, Eric Marks here again with FindingMiddleEarth.com and today we're going to talk about the successor to the Nikon D810. Uh, actually, we're going to talk about where is the successor to the Nikon D810. Uh, I am just begging for it. Um, been waiting for a little while. I own a Nikon D810. Uh, if you follow me, you know that this is my favorite Nikon camera I've ever used. Um, I use it for all my landscape and outdoor photography. And uh, I mainly do uh, fine art landscape stuff, so I use this for uh, big fine art gallery prints and uh, do a lot of print sales online. So that's kind of my main focus is resolution and image quality because when you sell prints, you want them really rich and just filled with detail and color. So um, before we start, I'm going to read a quick article on the Nikon Rumors website page here, okay? Um, and by the way, I'm not you know, like in endorsing this page in any way, uh, I don't think they're, you know, great or, you know, not so great. I'm just reading an article because this seems to be the website uh, that a lot of people go to to get their rumors. So um, here we go. On NikonRumors.com, uh, they posted this article on um, October 9th of 2015, so just a few months ago. Okay, and here's what it says. It says, I received a tip that Nikon is working on a new D810S camera uh, that should be announced soon. I do not have any details or specifications, but I am guessing that compared to the D810, the new D810S will have better ISO performance and maybe a few other small improvements. Uh, and then they go on to talk about a couple of other possible small improvements. Uh, and then they say, this information comes from a very reliable source who previously told me about the D810 camera. Uh, however, like I already mentioned, I have not received any other D810S tips, which makes this rumor questionable. So, um, I hope that rumor is questionable because I will be honest, I'm going to be really disappointed in Nikon if they decide to just come out with the D810S and give it a better stop of low light performance and then, you know, call it quits. Um, this is kind of what Nikon did with the D4 and D4S, which were their flagship cameras before they recently just came out with the D5. Um, and so basically, and I know because I owned a Nikon D4 and it was a great camera. Uh, I used it for wildlife. It was great. It focused great. It, uh, it shot at 10 frames per second. But then they released the D4S not too long after, and it just had um, better ISO performance and a little bit faster autofocus. And so I was pretty happy because, you know, at the time I had spent so much money on the D4 that I was happy they didn't just screw me over and make my camera obsolete. But I'm kind of tired of that. You know, I really want Nikon to step up their game and start giving us the cool technology at a better price that we're starting to see from a lot of other companies. Um, so I'll go over some of my predictions um, and I'll go over some possibilities. So first thing, if Nikon does decide to do this whole D810S uh, better low light performance thing, um, they might make you know a little bit faster autofocus, higher, perform uh, higher, higher ISO performance by about a stop, um, and basically what that will do is that will tell me that Nikon has just bought themselves another year of development on the D820 or D900, whatever they're going to call it, um, which I think is a mistake because right now all these camera companies are coming out with, it, with what seems like their best stuff and they're all just throwing it into these cameras at such a great price and you're seeing it through quite a few companies. Um, so let's let's talk about that for a second. Pentax, okay? Not a lot of people shoot Pentax for digital SLR, um, for digital SLR photography in general. Their their crop sensor stuff is good. It's built well. A lot of it's very very well weather sealed, um, but they've never had a full frame DSLR. Well, they just released a full frame DSLR. It's called the Pentax K1, and it's 36 megapixels, just like my D810. It has in-body five-axis image stabilization. That just blows my mind. It's the first DSLR, to my knowledge, that has that. Uh, I had that when I owned the Sony A7R Mark II, um, and it was unbelievable. It I could shoot handheld at like a tenth of a second and get sharp photos. So they put that into the Pentax K1. 
uh, I believe it has 4K recording, um, almost positive it does, and it has uh, weather sealing, it's got the 36 megapixels, it's got uh, 33 focus points, so not the most focus points in the world, but from what I hear, it, it focuses really fast. Um, and it's got the stabilization, and it, it comes in at a price of 1800 US dollars. How do they, you know, how do they do this? So it, when, I, when I saw this Pentax K1 come out, I just thought I have to make this video talking about where is the successor uh, that Nikon is going to be releasing, or hopefully they're going to be releasing. Um, I want something that I can take out like this D810 and you know, take it into the wilderness and know that I have a beastly camera that's going to make unbelievable prints in the end. And I want that confidence again with Nikon. I have it in the D810, but I don't want to buy another D810. I, I'm sitting here. I have uh, money already set aside for a second camera because I did have a Nikon D800e as my second camera, but it had some really bad autofocus issues. So I let Nikon fix it and then I sold it uh, and I'm just waiting for something new. I don't want to buy the new Nikon D5 or D500 that came out. I just don't want to spend two grand on a crop sensor camera body with 20 megapixels. It just doesn't really sound like my thing uh, for, for what I need for my type of photography. It's great if you do sports and action, you know, wildlife stuff. It'll be great for you. Um, so here's what I think is going to happen uh, if they release a D820 or a D900. Okay, this is what I think would have to happen um, in order to keep me really interested in Nikon's technology and their future evolution of cameras. Um, so this isn't my prediction of what, you know, will happen. Like, I haven't heard this from Nikon. I don't have any sources inside of Nikon's corporation. I'm just simply saying, I think these are the features that they would have to add in order to keep the D810 at the $3,200 price range that it was when it was released. So here we go. Um, D820, D900, I think it's a given, it has to have 4K video recording, okay? Every DSLR right now is on this whole 29 minute limit of 4K recording or 1080p recording. Uh, the Panasonic GH4 and GH3, which are micro four thirds cameras, those can go up to, I believe, four hours of 4K recording, which is unbelievable because then it wouldn't make people want to buy camcorders uh, so that they can just pop in a 128 gigabyte card and record forever. Um, people like me that record longer videos at one time, I, you know, I don't, I don't record any of my videos with a DSLR anymore. I bought the uh, Sony FDR AX, AX100, I think is what it was, uh, and it's a 4K camcorder with a one inch sensor, and it, it's great, it's a wonderful video camera, but it was just under $2,000, and you know, I would have loved to have had a second camera body like a Nikon D820, D900, and record with that. Um, so, I think 4K recording is a must. Um, the focus system, so right now the D810 has the group autofocus that was in the uh, D4S, which is great. I have don't have any complaints about it, but I, it definitely did not uh, focus as good as a 5D Mark III. Uh, I have owned a 5D Mark III. I got to play around with it for a while, about a year, uh, and the 5D Mark III is one of the fast, fastest focusing DSLRs I've ever uh, shot with. It's very, very lightning fast. The D810 isn't quite as fast as that, uh, but it's not slow. Um, so I think they would be smart to drop the 153 autofocus point system in from the D5 and D500 and just throw that right into this new D820, um, especially since they're probably going to charge upwards of $3,000. I better not get 10 more focus points and pay $1,000 more than the D500, which has, uh, oh, I just, just hit my microphone, um, which has, you know, so many more focus points. So uh, I think they better drop in those 153 focus points, 4K video recording, and I would love to see them break the limit on this 29 minute recording thing. Uh, if they could somehow figure out in a firmware update to break the limit of 29 minutes and go up to three or four hours, I would be the happiest person in the world. So um, apart from that, I think they need to add up the frames per second um, so that I don't have to also buy another camera for wildlife and action. I would love to be able to just say, okay, great, I'll take this you know, 36 megapixel camera or whatever, pop it into DX crop mode, and now I'm on 10 frames per second. So I would love for them to add eight frames per second or 10 frames per second, something like this, um, 
even if they did eight frames per second native in like 10 frames per second in crop mode or with a battery grip, something. I just want my $3,000 camera to do 10 frames per second, especially when the little Sony a6000 and a6300 do 11 frames per second and they're like this big. Uh, okay, so I, I really, really think that's necessary now. We're at a point where people just don't like paying more money to get less features. It just doesn't make sense when they're seeing all these other camera companies come out with these crazy features and packing them into, you know, this one camera to rule them all, if you will. Um, okay, so as far as the megapixel count, um, I hope they don't, you know, uh, go 36 megapixels again. I'm not complaining. I think 36 megapixels is enough for anybody, but with Sony having their A7R Mark II sitting at 42 megapixels and Canon having their 5DS and 5DSR sitting at 50 megapixels, I'm hoping Sony will do something about this. I'm sorry, not Sony, Nikon will do something about this, especially since Nikon uses Sony sensors. They could easily, you know, take the sensor from the A7R II, uh, you know, upgrade it a little bit and pop it into the new D820 or D900. Um, and the, now, now we're rocking with a Nikon with 42 megapixels. Uh, we'll have 4K recording, fast focus, fast frame rate. Uh, I hope they put in SnapBridge from the D5 and D500. Um, and touchscreen would be great. Another huge thing, this is like one of the biggest things I've wanted for so long on these cameras that I'm paying so much money for, GPS. I want built-in GPS, please. I don't want to have to buy some $200 unit to plug into the side of my camera and have it get knocked on trees and rocks. I just want you to build in the GPS. That's another thing that the Pentax K1 has, by the way, is it's got built-in GPS, uh, all for that $1,800 price tag. I don't know how they're doing this, but they're doing it right. I've heard countless people now online that have reviewed this camera say that it is just unbelievable. Um, I'm not switching to Pentax, so don't worry. Uh, I might get it to play with it and review it, but I love I love my Nikon gear. I'm simply just making this video because I want Nikon to do better. Um, so I would love it to have GPS. Okay, that's that's a given. That way, it's all my photos are geotagged. I don't have to use my uh, Garmin Phoenix 2 watch to uh, record while I'm hiking and then take the files and tag them all, you know, against the photos back in Lightroom. Uh, that's what I'm doing now. It's, it's such a pain in the butt. I'm literally, I'm, I'm using this GPS watch to take the files and attach them to the photos back in Lightroom. Uh, it's not something really hard to do. It's just an extra step. Um, okay. So then low light performance. I don't really care, you know, if, if they keep the low light performance the same, especially if they're going to up the megapixels to 42 or 50. I'm fine with that because uh, the low light performance in the D810 is already pretty darn good. Uh, I'm happy with it. I can get usable shots at 6400 ISO and that's pretty much as high as I ever shoot anyway. Um, so, you know, I'm not a wedding photographer, so I don't, I don't I'm not longing for 25,000 ISO usable shots. Uh, if you want that, get the Sony a7S. Um, so they might keep the ISO the same. They might bump it by a stop. Uh, but if they up the megapixels, they'll probably keep it the same. Again, I'm fine with that. Um, as long as they add GPS. Okay. So another want, uh, but not a nest, you know, not a necessity. I don't think they have to do this. I would love them to do this is to add a fully articulating screen, a tilty flippy screen. That would be awesome. But there's so many people that fight against that. They just, you know, they say, Oh, well, if a camera has this tilty screen, it's not professional and I'm not going to pay for that. So I would love it because it, it would make life so much easier on getting weird perspectives so that you can simply just pull out your screens and see what's going on. Um, okay, so let's do a quick rundown on what I think has to happen for me to stay interested in this new D810 successor. So 4K video recording, it must have. Uh, 153 autofocus point system from the D5 and D500, um, or at least something similar. Maybe they'll do something better, who knows. Excuse me. Um, a 8 or 10 frames per second. I would love to just you know, see them slap 10 in there with no limitations, but they might do something like 8 frames per second native and 10 frames per second in DX crop mode. Again, that's fine because in crop mode on a 42 megapixel or 36 megapixel sensor is still more than enough. It's like 16 megapixels. So I'm fine with that. Um, so up the frames per second. Um, I would like to see them add, uh, let's see, GPS. Um, do something with the low light. I don't, they don't have to do that. The, the low light can, again, remain the same or it can go a stop better would be fine. Um, and then the fully articulating LCD screen that tilts and flips. Um, I, I would love that. Another thing I just thought of actually 
uh, Wi-Fi would would be amazing now. Uh, Wi-Fi and NFC would be great now that they have it on the uh, D500 and the D5. You know, it's like. Well, they pretty much have to put it in all their newest, you know, $3,000 cameras now because why in the world are, you know, people don't want to pay more money to get less features. So uh, Wi-Fi is kind of a given in my opinion too, just like the 4K is. Those are like the two most, you know, easy features now that I would think that people, uh, that these camera manufacturers would have to put in because any DSLR that comes out right now uh, in this day and time and doesn't have 4K recording you're just going to disappoint your customers. Uh, 4K is becoming more and more regular on the market. Uh, you're seeing it all over YouTube now. Um, and I also think that 360 uh, cameras are also going to start getting bigger and bigger on YouTube. So uh, I, I'm glad to see that Nikon came out with this 360 action camera. So, um, you know, all in all, I love Nikon. Uh, I think they make great stuff, but I really want them to uh, keep me hooked and impress me on this successor to the D810. Uh, so I would love to hear from you guys in the comments. Uh, what do you think? What you know? Do, do, when do you think it might be released? What features do you want in it? Uh, have you heard anything on any other rumor websites uh, that you know that I might be missing? Are there anything you know? Is there anything else cool that you that you would want to have in this camera? Um, and what camera do you use now? And you know, what, what do you love? So I, I use the D810 with a, a second camera. I told you I had the D800E. Um, you know, let me know if you guys are just kind of content with this, or do you think it needs to step it up and start getting more and more technology? So, uh, I'll talk to you guys in the comments and thank you so much for watching. If you would like to stay up to date on all of my latest photography videos and adventures, click the big subscribe button below. And if you would like to find out more about me and how to become a great photographer, visit my website at findingmiddleearth.com.